What do Stevie Ray Vaughan and Willie Nelson have in common? Both rose to fame here in Austin. Austin is a very vibrant city, where music is a huge part of its culture, with many things including ACL as one of the prime highlights of the city. Austin has even been gone so far as to be labeled the live music capital of the world by its own city uh, council. An active participant in the Austin music scene since 1990 when I first got here. Uh, I came down to Austin from the Dallas-Fort Worth area from Arlington uh, in 1990 to attend UT. And my best friend and I uh, came down to check it out the spring prior in our senior year uh, over spring break, which coincided with South by Southwest here. And uh, when I saw what was going on, I basically lost my mind and realized this is where I needed to be playing down at the Elephant Room. Uh, it is sort of the epicenter of jazz here in Austin. And you can go down to the Elephant Room any night of the month, and you don't even have to check the schedule, but you can be pretty much guaranteed that you're going to see something spectacular. But what makes the music so important in Austin's culture? The answer is simple. Rich history. Austin's music history stretches back many decades, but what often is considered the golden age is the 1970s and 80s, where rock music ruled the landscape and venues like the Armadillo World Headquarters thrived. Yeah, I mean, um, the 70s is so interesting. Like, we talk so much about the 60s, but the 70s is really kind of the fruition of the both political and creative explosions of the 1960s. So, like, you get so many different types of music. You get this cowboy cover scene in Austin. You've got um, funk and hip hop, real funk really flourishing and hip hop emerging, particularly in New York, Detroit, places like that. You've got um, still the kind of continuation of Motown and soul music from the 60s with people like Marvin Gaye who's still making really important, and Chris Mayfield and others who are still making that kind of important music. But then you've got the rise of punk and metal, you've got um, glam rock, which is very 70s in its reputation. Like, you still see, I think, that, and Austin even has a penchant for that. Like, there's a lot of bands right now that are very, like, throwback. Like, there's, um, I don't think they're together anymore, but, uh, I don't forget anything too much. <laughs> there, there's a handful of bands that are very much, like, sound like ACDC, or um, that kind of 60s, 70s, rock sound so it's still I think present in that way and then what really takes off in the 80s is the punk scene um, metal not so much in Austin like you yeah. you really have a much more concentrated scene in San Antonio um, but still music with like a much harder edge and so you get groups like pardon the expression but the dicks <laughs> um, the rise of genres like funk rock and hip-hop all led to the development of the Austin music scene over the years, creating such things like the Armadillo World Headquarters in 1970 and Inner Sanctum Records, but probably the most popular example being ACL, becoming a phenomenal music festival from the TV show roots that it once had. But besides Austin's city limits, one thing that has surely shaped the landscape of Austin's music scene today was the cosmic cowboy scene of the 70s and 80s. Never before had rock and country, mixed with its own culture, created such a harmonic time period for Native so Austin. I think it actually has its roots even further back in the 60s, um, and particularly with the emergence of the counterculture being pretty prominent in Austin. And you've got that in kind of two different ways. You've got a fairly prominent activist scene going on at UT, um, and then you also have, not singularly, but definitely in terms of the way we kind of read history back on itself, um, the presence of Janis Joplin was really significant in terms of once she leaves, she's here in the 60s and starting to play at the Vulcans they have at Fred Gills on the Story of Lamar. And her, among a number of other people, like her, her band, Big Brother, getting their start in, uh, well, I guess they're out in San Francisco. But once she leaves and goes out to San Francisco, you've got a lot of people who kind of She's part of a bigger trend already of people migrating out there. And then you got a lot of other local musicians who migrate out there. And then they come back 
really late 60s, early 70s. And so, as you know, Austin has in its early stages been a fairly typical southern town, city, small city though. Um, and then once you get that infusion of the counterculture coming out of both UT and the music scene, it really shifts the city a lot. And then the Cosmic Cowboy scene is kind of the next stage of that where Armadillo headquarters becomes this kind of center for the counterculture. Um, but you've got, it's still Texas, right? So there's still like, a lot of trends that are well established by this point, like from the 30, 20s actually through the 50s, you've got like Texas Swing becoming really prominent and country music, true country music becoming prominent. Um, but then this countercultural thing, which I think is more unique to Austin when you've got strong music scenes in Houston, Dallas, and San Antonio, but they're kind of specific to those areas and either very rooted in those Texas traditions or connected to populations that are in those cities. So like in San Antonio, you're having Tejano music being really big and things like that. However, as time passes and the Austin music scene continues to grow, its musicians face many challenges. 20% of them live below the federal poverty line and another 30% just above it. Well, I mean, I don't know. My brother still plays out and he's, he plays with both. Like, he's an interesting example. So like he was here through the 90s had a fairly successful band that was very much of the 90s, like an alt-rock band, this kind of poppy sound that um, he, his band Bug, played alongside Spoon, which is I think one of the most prominent Austin bands that's gone on to bigger things. Um, but like now he's playing in an alt-rock band where, it's, I don't know, it's okay. <laughs> I think he could do better music on his own, but he's like, a, he started off at least as like a higher hand playing as a drummer because that's always the hard, drummers and basses are always the ones that are hard to find. Everybody wants to be a frontman or a guitarist. Um, and so like, I think his his life now where like he has to make a living teaching music, which he loves, but it's like a grind. And then he plays in this kind of all rock band that's somewhat successful, um, but it's definitely younger and, I don't know, seems not a dime a dozen, but not all that unique. Austin. There's always competition, and uh, I view that as a good thing, uh, but you, you, know, you can't ever really stop hustling. You can't ever stop practicing because everybody around me is practicing. Um, and I think, separate from that, uh, one of the uh, challenges that faces musicians in general in this town uh, is the uh, economic challenge of just trying to make your way as, as a professional musician. Uh, it doesn't matter who I'm playing with, at least 50% of the people in the band have doctorates in jazz performance. And yet, uh, what we make uh, at the end of the night is really laughable. Um, But if you say, I'm not going to play a gig for that kind of money, then some other really fantastic musician will step in right away and take that gig. And so there really hasn't been any sort of pressure for uh, club owners to pay decent wages to musicians who are out there playing until 1.30 in the morning. Uh, you can look at other professions in town or elsewhere, and you can see how income has risen along with inflation or along with the cost of living over the past, you know, however long. But, but really, musicians in this town are making what they were making 50 years ago. 50 years ago. But through all the years of change and challenge, Austin still stands today as one of the most prominent music hubs in all of Texas, if not in the entire world. Shows still occur every day around the hustling, bustling streets and the venues of today are still open and kicking to rock. I think the musicians here uh, uh, make a concerted effort to hold true to that. I think that uh, if, the, if the city wants to be able to attract attention uh, by calling ourselves the live music capital of the world, then they could be a little more, then us, we as a city could be a little more hospitable uh, to musicians and I'm, I'm